Welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Lord. We are talking Braves trade deadline. We received some positive news from Marcel Azuna that he is not injured. So had he been injured, as I said yesterday, I think potentially the biggest need could be an outfielder because you don't know what you're going to get when Ozuna comes back, whether he missed six, eight weeks, whatever. Rosario hasn't been great. Kevin Pillar is a nice bench piece, but you don't want him starting. I think that would have been the biggest need. Now I think that gets put on the back burner. Hopefully Rosario can keep playing well after, after a couple, a bad week or so. Hopefully he can bounce back and prove to be the guy. I still think you need to get a bat, a starter right now. I think you're okay because I think Max Fried's going to come back. If you want to get a Zach Grinke type, I wrote about on the site. Go check it out, sportstalkatl.com. Some veteran starters that could be available. Truthfully, there's not going to be a lot of sellers this year. The MLB playoff expansion let a lot of other teams feel like they have hope. And two months left in the season, not that many teams are going to be out of it. The NL Central and AL Central are terrible divisions. So even though there's a lot of bad teams, they all feel like they still have a chance, even though they probably shouldn't. The AL West is wide open outside of the Rockies. The NL East, everybody is going to feel like they have a chance outside of the Mar or not the Marlins. That was just habit. Um, the <laughs> Nationals, <laughs> the AL East, everybody feels like they have a chance. And the AL West, you got like the A's. And when you look at the teams that are for sure sellers, Royals, A's, Nationals, they don't, they don't have a lot of great pieces. They don't have a lot of great pieces. So it's going to be slim pickings. I think things are going to, you're going to have to pay more to get less than in previous years because there's not going to be a lot of great players available. But I do think one area where the Braves have to improve and will improve is the bullpen. You can usually find them from for pennies on the dollar. And one team that I wrote about today on the site, once again, sportstalkatl.com, is the Kansas City Royals. There's two guys that I'm looking at. One, fans are probably going to be up in arms yelling, no, 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 not because who, who he is on the field, but who he is off the field, and that's Aroldis Chapman. Aroldis is back, baby. He is now looking like one of the most dominant relievers and closer. He still has a fastball well over 100 miles per hour. He would solidify the back end of the Braves rotation. You could go with Chapman at the end of games. You could go with Iglesias at the end of games, however Snicker wants to handle it. But he'd bump everyone else down and take a lot of pressure off this unit. I think you got Chapman. You're talking about one of the most deadly weapons coming out of the bullpen. He was on a one-year deal. They literally signed him to give him a chance to boost his value and trade him. He will be traded at the deadline. I'm interested to see how his market is, though, because of all the off-the-field issues and whether he fits in clubhouses and stuff like that. But the Braves, I mean, they still feature Marcelo Zuna. I, I know we love Marcelo Zuna, but let's not deny the history. They clearly are willing to look past those kind of things, at least from their history, uh, with Marcelo Zuna, if it helps the team win. Now, would they do it again with Aroldis Chapman? Sounds sketchy. I don't believe they would, but I don't. I wouldn't count it out. He's a one-year, $3.5 million deal. And if you added them there, you could win a World Series. And if if that's really your end game, and he doesn't cost you too much prospect capital, I I don't know. I don't know. I like it, it would get me excited. He's a 16 K9. 16, 1 6. He's averaging two strikeouts per per inning. I think the biggest thing has it doesn't have to do the Braves are a buttoned up organization. They're like the Dodgers in a lot of sense that they want to do the right thing. Uh, they want to be, you know, uh, likable by the vast majority of fans, not just Braves fans. Um, with that being said, I think you saw it with Marcelo Zuna. The reason why he stuck around so long wasn't that $64 million deal. It was his presence in the locker room. Uh, and I don't know who Aroldis Chapman is in the locker room. I don't think anybody could give you a definitive answer unless they've been in it with him. Uh, so I think that's a major factor I don't think, that I, people I, aren't considering. I am spitballing here, but just off like memory, I don't think it's fantastic. I was I gonna say that, but I don't. I don't want to be wrong. I just don't remember. Like I remember the Yankees fans, you know, giving them hell. E even with that being said, you said it. Relievers are a lot of. This is going to be a reality for baseball for you know the rest of the expanded playoffs. When teams think they have a chance, they're not going to sell. And with the expanded playoffs, every team thinks they have a chance. So this is going to become a reality uh, or, you know, an annual thing where not a lot of teams are selling. With that being said, there will always be a couple of sellers and they always have relievers. I love 
this part of baseball where bad teams just try and pick up relievers or, you know, any guy, you know, DHs, outfielders, for, give them a one year deal, hope they bounce back just so they can trade and sell them high. It's just like the stock market. It's hilarious. I love that part of baseball. And the Braves have been pretty dang good about, you know, fleecing teams and whatever it might be, whatever situation it might be. And relievers is one of those. So I, I would not be shocked if we see another Alex Anthopoulos gym here at the trade deadline. Yeah. I mean, just like if you look back, they've gotten relievers at every deadline over the last couple of seasons, um, maybe outside of 2020, but 2020 was a wonky year. I'm not even going to count that. They got three in 2009. They got Richard Rodriguez in 2021. And then last year they got Rysel Iglesias. Now, Rodriguez obviously didn't pan out, but it's an area that you can get guys. And, and to be honest, I don't think a single person could name a prospect that I can name probably all of them, but they're not good players. Like it's not like they went out there and you got them for nothing. You got them for guys that were sitting in your 20th prospect. Most of them had not made an impact. I mean, you got, you literally got Rossell Iglesias for Jesse Chavez and Tucker Davidson, who was an all-star closer and has been an all-star closer uh, over his entire career. So you don't usually have to get a lot to get these guys, especially on one-year deals. One guy, another Kansas City guy, and I, the reason I'm, I'm talking about these guys in specifics is because I wrote about them, and I think they're two guys that are very, very, very likely to get dealt, and there's already been reports that the Kansas City will finally deal. And the other one, Scott Barlow. Now, Scott Barlow has been one of the best relievers in the league over the last two years. He hasn't been as good this year, but he's still got another year left on his contract. So he helps you not only this year, but next year. And I went and looked at his advanced analytics and dove into why he might be struggling. And he's given up too many walks. Uh, he's usually not a high walk guy, but over the last this year, he has been. And that's played a big part of it. But the rest of his numbers are even better than he was when he was good as far as advanced analytics, average X velocity, his K numbers, stuff like that. He's still really, 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 really damn good. And I think both of those guys are very likely to get dealt. And I think you could definitely see the Braves calling the Kansas City Royals uh, for relief help over the next two months. Yeah, and to talk about the Braves relief core a little bit, I know there's one guy in particular that has been thrown in a lot of high leverage situations and he's been he's been, you know, decent for us but is Nick Anderson. And I know he's a feel good story, he's done some great things for us, but it just feels a little shaky and I don't like him coming out in the 8th inning in a high leverage situation. You'd much rather have somebody like a Roldis Chapman or, you know, that kind of Not everybody far, getting bumped down would just be ideal for the Braves. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a lack of, a lack of numbers as much as it is just finding another guy to, to put at the back in your rotation that's downright dominant, which is why I mentioned Chapman. And Chapman's going to come up a lot. And, and it, he's a polarizing figure, but the facts are he's really good and might be the best reliever available. And he absolutely has experience closing games and big games. So he's going to be brought up whether you like it or whether you don't. Scott Barlow is another guy. And yet, yeah, speaking on Nick Anderson, I actually just wrote a thing on him. I'm, I mean, I'm just pumping out content over here. Uh, so you got you got you got to follow the site, but all of this stuff is on the site. Fangraphs did an article on him on on kind of why his start is a little fluky and who he was back in 2019 and 2020, and why people didn't offer him a big contract going into 2021. He settled for a $875,000 non guaranteed contact with the Braves, which even after injuries is so small for a player that was so dominant with the Rays. And there were, there were worries about his extension. There was worry of, about his dominant fastball not being as good. And then you go look at the numbers and yeah, his whiff rate on his fastball is down. It's not as dominant as it used to be. Uh, his whiff rate on his curveball, which he's now using more than his fastball, which was his most dominant pitch is down. So yeah, there is a little, like his numbers are good and he has been good. He's actually has 0.9 F4, which is one of the top relievers in the league. But even fan graphs was like, I'm expecting him. They, they they even quoted it. I'll quote him. He's like, he's he's the hitters figuring out that they rely on his curveball too much away from becoming a pumpkin. So <laughs> I don't think I don't I'm not as down on, on on Nick Anderson like becoming like a bad reliever, but I do agree relying on him in the eighth inning continuously is probably not sustainable, which is why I think they and even Jesse Chavez. I love Jesse Chavez. I've been yeah, but like, is he gonna have a 1.55 ERA? No. So I think those are things point. that you have to content, uh, consider. Yeah, when you get to the playoffs, you want – obviously, you want your starters to get you to the seventh inning so you can do, you know, seven, eight, nine, three guys, you know, and just lock it down. That's what you want. 
but that's not that's an ideal situation. It's not always going to happen. Of course, we want you know it to be it, it, Colin McHugh, AJ Mentor, Rossiel Iglesias, but that's not always going to happen. We need you know every single playoff team. Uh, you know, they hit every great playoff team, they hit bombs and their pitching is ridiculous. And it, whether it's, you know, the starting pitchers going deep into the games or the relief hitters uh, or the relief pitchers coming in and just saving the day. That Braves relief core when we won the World yeah. Series was unhittable. And it was of a, a driving factor in the reason why the Braves won the World Series. And it's it, it's by far right now the weakest link of the Braves. And I know they're still performing admirably. They're, they rank near the top of the league in most categories. But I, I don't think any Braves fans is looking at it and they're like, yes, I, I feel very confident in the relief core. Yeah. Well, coming up after the break, we are going to talk. We got a fantastic just stop tweeting for you.